In today's video, we are going to look at materials and how they can make our scene look amazing when we use them in conjunction with textures. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. Like I said, today we're looking at textures and if you want to follow along with this video tutorial series, I highly recommend looking at the playlist and watching it from the start. You will get a lot of insight on how to work with React 3 Fiber. Let's go ahead and set up our scene with three different spheres so we can actually see the results of our textures that we're going to apply. In the code, let's go ahead and create a new component and call this Textured Spheres. And in this component, what we'll do is we'll just return a normal sphere geometry and mesh in fact we're going to return three of them so let's create a mesh and instead of a cone let's use a sphere and let's get three of them let's also remove the wireframes from each as well as the color We will need to make this component Pascal case and then let's go ahead and add it to our canvas down here. We should now see this when we refresh our application. All the spheres are on top of each other so let's go and move them next to each other on the x-axis. There are various ways of doing this but I'm just simply going to add a position with a vector 3 and this is how we can add it. For the first one, I want to make this minus 1, then 0 for the Y and 0 for the Z. And I'm going to copy this and paste it into the other meshes. Then let's center the middle one, giving it a 0 value, and this one, 1. Now if we save this and go back to our scene, we can see the three spheres are right next to each other. For this test, I would like the directional light to be a bit higher, so it shines from top down and we can brighten the ambient light as well. In the code for the ambient light, let's give this value a 3. And for the position of our directional light, for the Y value, we're going to make this 5. Save this, and let's go and observe our scene. I think this will work for our setup, and now we get to play around with some materials. In the previous video, you learned that geometries are the skeleton of a mesh. And now the material is what wraps this geometry. In our example, we are going to make use of the mesh standard material and change its parameters to give us different effects. Now let's jump to the 3JS documentation on materials. Here you can see I've got the mesh standard material highlighted. And this is the effect that we get from applying a basic material. The first major concept that I would like you to grasp in this video is that materials and textures are two completely separate things. Here at the bottom we have textures and here we have materials. Materials have the ability to take on different textures and display them in different ways. By using different materials and changing the properties on those materials we get different effects from a base level. Here on the mesh standard material, we get this lovely blue color. But if this were to be a tune material, we get these hard shadows. And this has to do with how the data is being used in these materials. Like I said, we are going to focus on the standard material because we can change it in a lot of different ways, especially if we give it some texture data and I'm going to show you how this standard material can make something look super realistic. So just know that materials are how we display textures and how light reflects from these materials. Textures are another thing. With textures what you need to do is basically load data from a source. Over here we can have a texture loader and load an image. We can then take this data and feed it to our material 
and in fact a material can take a lot of textures all at once. Textures can have different purposes and this is what I'll show you just now. You can find textures all over the internet, but two great places are textures.com as well as Polyhaven. So as an example for textures that you can apply to materials, we have a few options. All these images over here are textures for the exact same image. Basically, each one is referred to as a map and has different data that the material can use to display the texture differently. For example, the first one over here is known as the color map, the diffuse map, giving the object its color. The second one over here is known as the height map. It consists of different grayscale values and can actually change the appearance and the height levels of a geometry. Then we have the normal map. This determines how light reflects from our object in different areas. The roughness map tries to determine where light should shine and reflect and where it should be a bit more dull. And then we get the ambient occlusion map. This map shows us the darkest shadows in relation to distances of objects. Now you might say, wait a minute, this seems like a lot just to add a texture to an object. Well, you don't need to use all of them. And I'll show you how you can use some of them in your scenes and some of them you can just leave out. To play around with the textures, I'm going to go to Polyhaven. And let's scroll down and find something cool. I think this one will fit very well. This metal plate texture would look very good. I just want to thank the author Rob for making this. Now for the downloads, you can decide how high resolution you want these. I'm going to choose a low resolution as well as try and select only the maps that I want to use. When you get to this page, you might see the EXR selected. We don't need these EXR files. I'm going to work with PNG. And the ones I need is the diffuse, the color one, the displacement one, the normal GL, as well as the roughness map. These four will be sufficient for our example. Go ahead and download those four files and extract them. Then in our project, go into the public folder, create a new folder called textures, and you can place them in here. Now that the images are in our project, we can use some kind of texture loader to load them all up. However, from the Dre project, if you can remember from the series, Dre has a wonderful texture loader and it's a hook called use texture. So we can make use of that. Let's go back into our project and import the use texture hook. Then in this component over here, I'm going to import each one of these textures in a separate variable. In the first one, this is going to be our map, the diffuse texture over here. The second one is going to be the displacement map, this one. Then we have the normal map, it looks like this, as well as the roughness map over here. Okay, and this is how you make use of the use texture hook. You simply provided the path to that file. This is now where we are going to play around with the result. So, in the first object that we have, we have the mesh standard material. And a mesh can take in a map. What we are going to give this map is our map that we've imported. Once we save this and go back to the application, refresh, we should already see our texture being applied to the sphere. The texture looks great, and technically you can leave it as it is. Then what it means is you will only need the color map, and you will be good to go and creating your apps. But if you want to go that extra distance, you can add some of the other ones that's going to make your application and your environment pop. To see the effects that the normal map, roughness map, and displacement map will have, let's first add the normal color map to each one of these materials. So we get the same material looking spheres. Then for the middle one, 
Let's now go ahead and add an extra one. Let's add the normal map. So in the middle mesh for this one's standard material, let's type in normal map and assign this to the normal map over there. I just realized that all these variables were referencing the same image, which technically we should refer this one over here and this normal map here and the rough map here. Now we can save and check out the normal map result. The results are faint, but it's definitely here. You can see that there's a darker shadow being casted over there and the light hits this object a bit differently now. This will be more apparent if we add the roughness map to this middle object. So let's give it the roughness map. Save. Let's go back and refresh the application. Here we go. Now this is fantastic. We can clearly see how the light hits the metal in different areas depending on the map. And this is great. It just gives it that more realistic feeling of a metal sheen. And if light were to hit it, this is how it would look. So far, I think you can agree that the middle one is really cool. But let's take this even a step further. For the last one, what we're going to do is of course include the normal map as well as the roughness. But this time we're also going to add a displacement map pointing to our displacement maps variable. Now we need to do something else as well, but I'm going to save this and go to the scene. Refresh and you'll see what starts to happen. This looks pretty crazy, but it is doing what it's intended to do. It's trying to move the geometries based on the displacement map with different heights. The only problem is that the geometry is a very low geometry. So you get these spikes. How we can make this better is by increasing the segments of our sphere. Just to show you what I'm talking about, if we turn on the wireframe for these two objects, and we look at them, we can see that the geometry over here is trying to pull them into the correct places. But there's not enough, so we need to make it more dense. We can do this by increasing the segments of the sphere geometry. In the arguments, let's make the size 1 and give it a 100 by 100 segments. Save this and go back, and now we can see that there's more than enough geometry over there, but it's still pulling it out of proportion. So we need to scale it a bit down. That can be easily done by adding a displacement scale. And over here, let's pass 0.1. If we go back, we can now see that these edges are starting to pop out. If we turn off the wireframe, now these bumps in the texture is visible and it actually extrudes some of the geometry. It looks a bit rough, but if we turn this maybe down to 0.05 and increase the segments even more, you can get a quite high quality shape. Between these three shapes, we can see of course the last one is the best, but this requires us to increase the geometry and make it more dense. And this could be a very bad thing when you look at performance. So in my opinion, if you want to get something that looks great, but doesn't take so much processing power, go for the middle option. This will save you a lot of headaches when it comes to performance issues in the future. This brings us to the end of this video, but keep in mind there's a lot more to learn about materials, shaders, textures, and UV unwrapping. We will touch on some of these subjects in the future videos of this series. But for now, if you've learned a lot from this video, give that like button some love and comment below what your favorite part was, as well as remember to subscribe. I hope that you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.